Jan Hus, c. 1369 to 6 July 1415, often referred to in English as John Hus or John Hus, was a Czech priest, philosopher, early Christian reformer, and master at Charles University in Prague. After John Wycliffe, the theorist of ecclesiastical reformation, Hus is considered the first church reformer, as he lived before Luther, Calvin, and Zwingli. Huss was a key predecessor to the Protestant movement of the 16th century, and his teachings had a strong influence on the states of Western Europe, most immediately in the approval of a reformist bohemian religious denomination, and, more than a century later, on Martin Luther himself. He was burned at the stake for heresy against the doctrines of the Catholic Church, including those on ecclesiology, the Eucharist, and other theological topics. After his execution in 1415, the followers of Huss's religious teachings rebelled against their Roman Catholic rulers and defeated five consecutive papal crusades between 1420 and 1431 in what became known as the Hussite Wars. A century later, as many as 90% of inhabitants of the Czech lands were non-Catholic and some still followed the teachings of Huss and his successors. Early life. Jan Hus was born in Husenek, Bohemia, in 1369. At an early age he travelled to Prague, where he supported himself by singing and serving in churches. His conduct was positive and his commitment to his studies was remarkable. In 1393, Hus earned the degree of Bachelor of Arts at the University of Prague, and he earned his master's degree in 1396. In 1400, he was ordained as a priest. In 1402 Hus began preaching inside the city demanding for the reformation of the church. He served as rector of the University of Prague in 1402-03. He was appointed a preacher at the newly built Bethlehem Chapel around the same time. Hus was a strong advocate for the Czechs, and therefore the realists, and he was influenced by the writings of John Wycliffe. Although church authorities banned many works of Wycliffe in 1403, Huss translated Trialogus into Czech and helped to distribute it. Career Huss tried to reform the church by delineating the moral failings of clergy, bishops, and even the papacy from his pulpit. Archbishop Zabin Exagic tolerated this, and even appointed Huss his preacher to the clergy's biennial synod. On 24 June 1405 Pope Innocent VII, however, directed the archbishop to counter Wycliffe's teachings especially the doctrine of impanation in the Eucharist. The Archbishop complied by issuing a synodal decree against Wycliffe, as well as forbidding any further attacks on the clergy. In 1406, two Bohemian students brought to Prague a document bearing the seal of the University of Oxford and praising Wycliffe. Huss proudly read the document from his pulpit. Then in 1408, Pope Gregory XII warned Archbishop Zajic that the Church in Rome had been informed of Wycliffe's heresies and of King Wenceslaus's sympathies for nonconformists. In response, the King and University ordered all of Wycliffe's writings surrendered to the Archdiocesan Chancery for correction. Huss obeyed, declaring that he condemned the errors in those writings. Papal Schism at this time, the Charles University in Prague was divided by the Western Schism, in which Gregory XII in Rome and Benedict XIII in Avignon both claimed the papacy. Wenceslaus felt Gregory XII might interfere with his plans to be crowned Holy Roman Emperor. He denounced Gregory, ordered the clergy in Bohemia to observe a strict neutrality in the schism, and said that he expected the same of the university. Archbishop Zajic remained faithful to Gregory. At the university, only the scholars of the Bohemian nation, with Huss as their leader, vowed neutrality. Kupnahor a decree at the urging of Huss and other Bohemian leaders. King Wenceslaus decreed that the Bohemian nation would have three votes in university affairs while the Bavarian, Saxon, and Polish nations would have only one vote in total. As a consequence, between 5,000 and 20,000 foreign doctors, masters, and students left Prague in 1409. 
This exodus resulted in the founding of the University of Leipzig, among others. Thus Charles University lost its international importance and became a strictly Czech school. The emigrants also spread news of the Bohemian heresies throughout the rest of Europe. Archbishop Zajic became isolated and Hus was at the height of his fame. He became rector of the university and enjoyed the favor of the court. Wycliffe's doctrines also regained favor in Prague. Alexander V becomes antipope in 1409. The Council of Pisa tried to end the schism by electing Alexander V as pope, but Gregory and Benedict did not submit. Hus, his followers, and Wenceslaus transferred their allegiance to Alexander V. Under pressure from Wenceslaus, Archbishop Zajic did the same. Zajic then lodged an accusation of ecclesiastical disturbances against Wycliffe fights in Prague with Alexander V. Excommunication On 20 December 1409, Alexander V issued a papal bull that empowered the archbishop to proceed against Wycliffeism in Prague. All copies of Wycliffe's writings were to be surrendered and his doctrines repudiated, and free preaching discontinued. After the publication of the bull in 1410, Huss appealed to Alexander V but in vain. The Wycliffe books and valuable manuscripts were burned, and Huss and his adherents were excommunicated by Alexander V. Indulgences Archbishop Zajic died in 1411, and with his death the religious movement in Bohemia entered a new phase, where the disputes concerning indulgences assumed great importance. Crusade against Naples Alexander V died in 1410, and was succeeded by John XXIII. In 1411, John XXIII proclaimed a crusade against King Ladislaus of Naples, the protector of rival Pope Gregory XII. This crusade was preached in Prague as well. John XXIII also authorized the sale of indulgences to raise money for the war, and priests selling indulgences urged people to crowd the churches and give their offerings. This traffic in indulgences was to some a sign of the corruption of the church. Condemnation of indulgences and crusade Huss spoke out against indulgences, but he could not carry with him the men of the university. In 1412, a dispute took place, on which occasion Huss delivered his address Quaestio Magistri Johannes Huss de Indulgentes. It was taken literally from the last chapter of Wycliffe's book De Ecclesia and his treatise De Absolutione a Peña a Culpa. Huss asserted that no pope or bishop had the right to take up the sword in the name of the church, he should pray for his enemies and bless those that curse him, man obtains forgiveness of sins by true repentance, not money. The doctors of the theological faculty replied, but without success. A few days afterward, some of Huss's followers, led by V.O.K. Vokes or Z. Valchena, burnt the papal bulls. Huss, they said, should be obeyed rather than the church, which they considered a fraudulent mob of adulterers and simonists. In response, three men from the lower classes who openly called the indulgences a fraud were beheaded. They were later considered the first martyrs of the Hussite church. In the meantime, the faculty had condemned the 45 articles and added several other theses, deemed heretical, which had originated with Huss. The king forbade the teaching of these articles, but neither Huss nor the university complied with the ruling, requesting that the articles should be first proven to be unscriptural. The tumult at Prague had stirred up a sensation. Papal legates and Archbishop Albrecht tried to persuade Huss to give up his opposition to the papal bulls, and the king made an unsuccessful attempt to reconcile the two parties. Attempts at reconciliation Wenceslaus made efforts to harmonize the opposing parties. In 1412, he convoked the heads of his kingdom for a consultation and, at their suggestion, ordered a synod to be held at Sesky Broad on 2 February 1412. It did not take place there, but in the palace of the archbishops at Prague, in order to exclude Huss from participation. Propositions were made to restore peace in the church. Huss declared that Bohemia should have the same freedom in regard to ecclesiastical affairs as other countries and that approbation and condemnation should therefore be announced only with the permission of the state power. 
This was the doctrine of Wycliffe. There followed treatises from both parties, but no harmony was obtained. Even if I should stand before the stake which has been prepared for me, Huss wrote at the time, I would never accept the recommendation of the theological faculty. The synod did not produce any results, but the king ordered a commission to continue the work of reconciliation. The doctors of the university demanded approval of their conception of the church, according to which the pope is the head, the cardinals are the body of the church, from Huss and his followers. Huss protested vigorously. The Hussite party seems to have made a great effort toward reconciliation. To the article that the Roman church must be obeyed, they added only, so far as every pious Christian is bound. Stanislav Zazanodjeme and Stepan Palik protested against this addition and left the convention. They were exiled by the king, with two others. Huss leaves Prague and appeals to Jesus Christ by this time. Huss's ideas had become widely accepted in Bohemia, and there was broad resentment against the church hierarchy. The attack on Huss by the Pope and Archbishop caused riots in parts of Bohemia. Wenzlaus and his government took the side of Huss, and the power of his adherents increased from day to day. Huss continued to preach in the Bethlehem Chapel. The churches of the city were put under the ban, and the interdict was pronounced against Prague. To protect the city, Huss left and went into the countryside, where he continued to preach and write. Before Huss left Prague, he decided to take a step which gave a new dimension to his endeavours. He no longer put his trust in an indecisive king, a hostile pope or an ineffective council. On 18 October 1412 he appealed to Jesus Christ as the supreme judge. By appealing directly to the highest Christian authority, Christ himself, he bypassed the laws and structures of the medieval church. For the Bohemian Reformation, this step was as significant as the 95 Thesis nailed to the door of the Wittenberg Church by Martin Luther in 1517. After Huss left Prague for the country, he realized what a gulf there was between university education and theological speculation on one hand, and the life of uneducated country priests and the laymen entrusted to their care on the other. Therefore he started to write many texts in Czech, such as Basics of the Christian Faith or Preachings, intended mainly for the priests whose knowledge of Latin was poor. Writings of Huss and Wycliffe of the writings occasioned by these controversies, those of Huss on the Church, entitled De Ecclesia, were written in 1413 and have been most frequently quoted and admired or criticized and yet their first ten chapters are but an epitome of Wycliffe's work of the same title, and the following chapters are but an abstract of another of Wycliffe's works on the power of the Pope. Wycliffe had written his book to oppose the common position that the church consisted only of the clergy, and Huss now found himself making the same point. He wrote his work at the castle of one of his protectors in Cozy Radek, and sent it to Prague, where it was publicly read in the Bethlehem Chapel. It was answered by Zazen Ojeme and Palak with treatises of the same title. After the most vehement opponents of Huss had left Prague, his adherents occupied the whole ground. Huss wrote his treatises and preached in the neighborhood of Cozy Radek. Bohemian Wycliffeism was carried into Poland, Hungary, Croatia, and Austria. But in January 1413, a general council in Rome condemned the writings of Wycliffe and ordered them to be burned. Council of Constance Wenzlauser, brother Sigismund of Hungary, who was king of the Romans and heir to the Bohemian crown, was anxious to put an end to religious dissension within the church to put an end to the papal schism and to take up the long-desired reform of the church. He arranged for a general council to convene on 1 November 1414 at Constance. The Council of Constance became the 16th ecumenical council recognized by the Catholic Church. Huss, willing to make an end of all dissensions, agreed to go to Constance, under Sigismund's promise of safe conduct, imprisonment and preparations for trial. It is unknown whether Huss knew what his fate would be, but he made his will before setting out. 
He started on his journey on the 11th of October 1414. On the 3rd of November 1414, he arrived at Constance, and on the following day, the bulletins on the church doors announced that Mitchell Z. Nemeke Ho Brody would be opposing Huss. In the beginning, Huss was at liberty, under his safe conduct from Sigismund, and lived at the house of a widow, but he continued celebrating Mass and preaching to the people, in violation of restrictions decreed by the Church. After a few weeks, his opponents succeeded in imprisoning him, on the strength of a rumor that he intended to flee. He was first brought into the residence of a canon and then, on 8 December 1414, into the dungeon of the Dominican monastery. Sigismund was greatly angered, as the guarantor of Huss's safety, and threatened the prelates with dismissal. However, the prelates convinced him that he could not be bound by promises to a heretic. On 4 December 1414, John 23 entrusted a committee of three bishops with a preliminary investigation against Huss. As was common practice, witnesses for the prosecution were heard, but Huss was not allowed an advocate for his defense. His situation became worse after the downfall of John XXIII, who had left Constance to avoid abdicating. Huss had been a captive of John XXIII and in constant communication with his friends, but now he was delivered to the Archbishop of Constance and brought to his castle, Gottlieben on the Rhine. Here he remained for 73 days, separated from his friends, chained day and night, poorly fed, and ill. Trial on 5 June 1415, he was tried for the first time, and for that purpose was transferred to a Franciscan monastery, where he spent the last weeks of his life. Extracts from his works were read, and witnesses were heard. He refused all formulae of submission, but declared himself willing to recant if his errors should be proven to him from the Bible. Huss conceded his veneration of Wycliffe, and said that he could only wish his soul might some time attain unto that place where Wycliffe's was. On the other hand, he denied having defended Wycliffe's doctrine of the Lord's Supper or the Forty-Five Articles. He had only opposed their summary condemnation. King Wenceslaus admonished him to deliver himself up to the mercy of the council, as he did not desire to protect a heretic. At the last trial, on 8 June 1415, 39 sentences were read to him, 26 of which had been excerpted from his book on the church, 7 from his treatise against Palek, and 6 from that against Stanislav Zaza Nogemi. The danger of some of these doctrines to worldly power was explained to Sigismund to incite him against Huss. Huss again declared himself willing to submit if he could be convinced of errors. This declaration was considered an unconditional surrender, and he was asked to confess that he had erred in the theses which he had hitherto maintained, that he renounced him for the future, that he recanted him, and that he declared the opposite of these sentences. He asked to be exempted from recanting doctrines which he had never taught, others which the assembly considered erroneous. He was not willing to revoke, to act differently would be against his conscience. These words found no favorable reception. After the trial on 8 June, several other attempts were purportedly made to induce him to recant, which he resisted. Condemnation The condemnation took place on 6 July 1415, in the presence of the assembly of the council in the cathedral. After the high mass and liturgy, Huss was led into the church. The Bishop of Lodi delivered an oration on the duty of eradicating heresy, then some theses of Huss and Wycliffe and a report of his trial were read. Refusals to recant an Italian prelate pronounced the sentence of condemnation upon Huss in his writings. Huss protested, saying that even at this hour he did not wish anything, but to be convinced from Scripture. He fell upon his knees and asked God with a low voice to forgive all his enemies. Then followed his degradation. He was dressed in priestly vestments and again asked to recant. Again he refused. With curses, his ornaments were taken from him, his priestly tonsure was destroyed, and the sentence of the church was pronounced, stripping him of all rights, and he was delivered to secular authorities. 
Then a tall paper hat was put upon his head with the inscription, Heresy Arca. Hus was led away to the stake under a strong guard of armed men. Execution. At the place of execution, he knelt down, spread out his hands, and prayed aloud. The executioner undressed Hus and tied his hands behind his back with ropes, and bound his neck with a chain to a stake around which wood and straw had been piled up so that it covered him to the neck. At the last moment, the Imperial Marshal, von Pappenheim, in the presence of the Count Palatine, asked Hus to recant and thus save his own life. Hus declined thus, God is my witness that the things charged against me I never preached, in the same truth of the gospel which I have written, taught, and preached, drawing upon the sayings and positions of the holy doctors. I am ready to die today. Anecdotally, it has been claimed that the executioners had trouble intensifying the fire. An old woman then came to the stake and threw a relatively small amount of brushwood on it. Upon seeing her act, a suffering hus then exclaimed, Sanctus simplicitas. The phrase's Czech equivalent, Svata prostota, is still used today when commenting on a person's stupid action and naivete. It is said that when he was about to expire, he cried out, Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us. His ashes were later thrown into the Rhine River.